Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in the Shrek Game Zedicon video, we're going to be discussing and analysing AMD's Computex 2019 event, easily one of the most hyped and anticipated events in computing history. AMD did show off several products that we were expecting, including Matisse and also Nave. So we're going to be going through official announcements, plus several pieces of news since then, including a couple of statements by the company, and also a 16-core 32-thread part that was being demoed at Computex, but not during the live stream. And this part is actually really cool, so we'll go into that in just a moment. But we're going to start things off with AMD's Nave range of GPUs. So, there is some confirmations of rumours that we have heard for some time now. RTX 2070 levels of performance indeed, up to around 10%. So that puts uh, Nave in the best possible situation between the RTX 2070 and RTX 2080. We also have confirmation of GDDR6 memory, and the architecture is being known as RDNA. Do you get it? Radeon DNA? It's more ambiguous right now whether uh, RDNA is an iteration of GCN. Some people are saying that it is just a continuation of the GCN architecture, but radically improved. Others are saying that it is a completely different architecture to GCN. I'm personally on the advanced GCN train, but we're going to have to wait for official confirmation from AMD concerning that, and we're going to get a lot more information on Nave in a couple of weeks' time, basically during E3. It's a little frustrating we have to wait for more information regarding, let's say, pricing of uh, the Nave GPUs, but it is what it is. So let's go through what AMD have revealed of the GPUs. They are a new compute design according to AMD with improved efficiency and increased IPC. In terms of performance, it's said to be about 25% faster than previous GCN architecture and up to one and a half times better in terms of energy efficiency, which is really impressive. But obviously, we're going to have to wait for testing to see whether that is actually true. Multi-level cache hierarchy, this is to reduce latency, higher bandwidth across the silicon itself, plus lower power consumption, and apparently there's streamlined graphics pipeline. This allows for optimized uh, performance per clock and high speed, uh, high clock speed. A concern I personally have though is AMD were using Strange Brigade to demo the performance of the 5700, which is one benchmark that AMD are very favorable in compared to NVIDIA. Typically, the RTX 2080 actually outperforms the Radeon 7, but roles are definitely changed with a strange brigade, and the Radeon architecture really does shine here compared to NVIDIA. Hopefully, then, the 10% is a typical increase in performance across a myriad of different titles, and it's not just this one benchmark AMD are using as a best-case scenario, and in a lot of titles, it falls behind NVIDIA. The other thing is it's going to come down, of course, heavily to pricing. Sapphire did say that we will see a launch in July, so AMD have confirmed that. The July 7th thing, of course, was something that I originally said myself, that one of my sources had told me that the uh, Nave GPUs, the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, and the X570 chipset would be launching simultaneously on July the 7th. So Sapphire have confirmed this, but the other problem with Sapphire confirming the launch date is that they also said that the GPUs would be retailing at 399 and 499 US dollars for two SKUs. So if they launch uh, the 5700, the RX 5700, at 500 bucks, which is the same price essentially as what we are seeing NVIDIA currently charge for the RTX 2070, I think it's not bad necessarily, but it also isn't great because it basically means AMD are several months late to the party and only have a card which is identical-ish in performance. Hopefully then we see uh, AMD managed to retain a 10% lead across lots of different titles over NVIDIA and I think people would be less upset that they had to wait for so long or we see much greater energy efficiency over Turing. Uh, obviously GCN in the past has not had a great uh, reputation in terms of energy efficiency compared to NVIDIA but until we actually get cards in our hands and we see uh, better 
benchmarks. It's very difficult to call this for now. So I'm going to stop with the Narve information instead move over to the Ryzen 3000 stuff. So there is some official information, and by some official information, AMD have confirmed five Ryzen SKUs. These range from a 6-core, 12-thread uh, part all the way up to a 12-thread 24, uh, sorry, 12-core 24-thread part. But we also have a, a leak of a 16-core 32-thread CPU that was doing the rounds of Computex. So we're going to start things out with that, then move over to the official stuff. The YouTube channel Tech Yes City have managed to grab an image of a 16 core processor, which is 32 threads, of course, and it is unknown in terms of name right now. It's just a string of letters and numbers, so it's going to be interesting to see what AMD actually call this when it's finally released. I'll get into release in just a second, I promise. So apparently this is overclocked, and it is, of course, using the Zen 2 architecture, scoring 4,346 points. That's double the performance of a 2700X, and over two and a half times an 1800X, which is just monstrous. The images we see are between 4.1 and 4.25 gigahertz in clock frequency, and voltages range from just over 1.4 volts to almost 1.6 volts, which is... Well, it's a lot of volts. Let's just be honest. It's very hungry. It's, it's numbing on those volts, damn it. Uh, but still, the results are extremely impressive. The reason I find this very interesting as well is Bits and Chips on Twitter has said that according to their sources, AMD are still planning to launch a 16-core processor, but they're holding off until uh, Intel uh, counter them, and then obviously they can grab on to uh, more hype and PR by releasing a 16-core CPU. This is actually very similar to what I was told as well. I was told uh, quite early on that one of the issues that AMD were having uh, internally wasn't actually the development of a 16-core processor, not from a technical perspective. It's more like the marketing. How do they actually market a 16-core CPU and how do they deal with that, like in terms of release schedule and uh, from a marketing perspective, standpoint keeping the hype because obviously hype and anticipation of something that continues to sell you cpus so amd were kind of wondering about that internally particularly with fred ripper my personal opinion is that we will see a 16 core cpu from amd but it will be later on so for now a 12 core cpu is going to be the highest end skew so let's actually go through the list of different skews from amd and detail what exactly we can be seeing from the company the highest end SKU is a Ryzen 9 3900X, 12 cores, 24 threads, 4.6 gigahertz on the boost frequency, and it has a TDP of 105 watts. You can also uh, pick up 8 core processors, there are two of those, and they range from 105 to 65 watts. I have no idea how the overclocking slash maximum frequency is going to differ between these two models. And finally, we have a 3600 and 3600X. Those are two six-core parts, and once again, 4.4 gigahertz, uh, so 4.5 gigahertz basically for the 3600X, and 4.2 gigahertz for the 3600 vanilla. And the prices for these range with the top-end SKU at 500 US dollars down to just 200 US dollars. This is considerably more expensive for the six-core part than what we'd hoped. Uh, the rumors were that it was going to be uh, 99 US dollars. I was always suspicious it was going to be so cheap, but who the heck knows? Maybe AMD were going in for the, you know, being super duper ruthless. But yeah, uh, $200 to me for a six core, 12 thread part is still really good. And still, compared to, let's say, what you could get f uh, a couple of years ago with, let's say, the 8700K, it's still a really good deal. As for IPC gains, AMD are touting around 15% increase over the previous generation, which is also really good. They have given several benchmarks, but most of them revolve around things like Cinebench. So Cinebench R15, we also have our friend and buddy Blender as well. Fortunately, they have provided several game benchmarks. Uh, I'm going to be very curious to see what differences we see between Intel, uh, AMD's previous processors, the 1700X and the 2700X, for example, and the 3800X, uh, with lots of different games, 
and also the minimum average and maximum FPS. But according to their testing with these slides anyway, uh, League of Legends and Counter-Strike have a very nice performance increase, 34%. Whereas Grand Theft Auto and Dota are just around the 15% mark, which is still nothing to sneeze at. It's still a really nice increase in performance. But once again, uh, we're going to have to wait for internal, sorry, for more than just internal testing to see whether AMD can back those claims up in reality. There's also another fascinating rumour from Anantech, and that is that the X570 chipset does have 16 lanes. There are 4 upstream and 12 downstream. But according to them, AMD actually removed four PCIe lanes from the chipset, and this was to bring down the TDP of the chipset from 15 down to just 11 watts. And according to them as well, we see 3200 MHz uh, supported for DDR4 frequencies. This is something that I said as well. Uh, according to my sources, the memory speed officially supported by Ryzen 3000 is going to be 3200 MHz, but there are many reports of memory running at uh, over 4000 megahertz but obviously it will depend upon the motherboard the memory that you've got and also playing uh, silicon lottery particularly with the zen cpu as well because obviously different memory controllers you may get uh, your results definitely will vary i think the ryzen 3000 series is going to be very impressive um, it's not quite as cheap as i'd hoped for the six core model frankly i was expecting around 150 us dollars for the six core processor 12 thread but what we have learned uh many times as AMD were under pressure to increase its margins and the problem is if they did launch a six core processor that was just 99 US dollars it from gaming perspective would make not much sense to buy anything else because it would just be too good of a value you would just it would just basically decimate any uh, other option you would it would just be so easy to recommend that cpu even if the clock speed was only like four and a half gigahertz and didn't overclock any more than that with the ipc gains as well from a gaming value perspective it would just be ridiculous you people would just be picking up one of those one of the cheapest uh b motherboards whether it's a b450 or 550 or whatever and then buy whatever graphics card they could afford so it appears that four and a half gigahertz is roughly what we're going to be expecting on the top end for the Ryzen 3000 series, unless overclocking brings us drastically different results. To that end, the couple of sources that whispered to me up to 5 GHz for Ryzen 3000, just wrong. These were different sources that told me uh, the clock speed information compared to the launch date uh, and also the 500 series being PCIe 4, the fact that Radeon 7 was also a real product and so on. But yeah, the clock speed information was just incorrect. Jim over at Adorn TV believes that, uh, according to one of his sources anyway, it's possible we could see 5 GHz with overclocking. Who knows? I personally would not be hopeful on this. I would just say that, you know, unless AMD will release faster parts in the future, which is always possible, I guess, maybe as quality of silicon improves, but I would say that Ryzen 3000 is going to be around 4.5 GHz, which is still pretty darn good, considering the IPC gains of these chips. Uh, once again, though, I would caution you to uh, wait until we actually see reviews. Unless you desperately need to order a CPU right now, I would always wait uh, for product reviews, because ultimately, you never know if there's going to be a problem with the chips or they don't perform to your expectations. AMD are still going to be launching new Threadripper processors. This is actually according to Lisa Su herself. So there were two roadmaps that brought into question whether Threadripper was going to remain part of AMD's lineup. The first is we saw from investors we would see uh, Threadripper launch later this year. Uh, and then we also saw it then subsequently removed from a later roadmap. So people wondered, is it possible that AMD are just done with Threadripper? I personally was always of the standpoint that most likely no, AMD would launch Threadripper later on. And this is actually confirmed by her. She said, I don't think we ever said Threadripper is going, is, was not going to continue. It somehow took a life in its own on the internet. You will see more Threadrippers from us. You will definitely see more Threadrippers from us. So it looks like AMD are planning to still launch Threadripper, but whether it's going to be based on the Zen 2 CPUs, whether it's going to be based on Zen 3, no one really knows for certain. Personally, I think it will still be Zen 2 based. I just think that they are still trying to organize the Ryzen 3000 series first and 
Later on, Fred Report will come uh, and they'll probably have more of an understanding of exactly where Fred Ripper lies in the grander market. There's also a bit of drama concerning the benchmark that AMD used with Rome versus Intel's Xeon CPUs. And actually, Intel themselves spoke to WCCF Tech because they believed that AMD were not playing fair in the benchmark. So they actually provided um, a benchmark using a Xeon Platinum 9242 against the same Epic uh, Rome benchmark that AMD used. And in this benchmark, Intel and AMD are much different in terms of their standing. The original demo, Intel had a 28-core uh, processor in a two-socket configuration, which is obviously way less than half the number of CPU cores for AMD's ROM setup. This time, though, with the 9242, each CPU has 48 cores, which means you have 96 total, according to Intel anyway. This is the configuration that AMD uh, would actually be fighting off, not the CPU configuration that AMD showed during Computex. Furthermore, according to them, uh, AMD were not using, quote, the correct NAMD optimizations during the Computex 2019 demo, and thus that also was affecting the performance. Personally, I think AMD did nail my expectations of Computex 2019. I was hoping we would learn a little more regarding the Nave graphics cards, but it was enough to whet my appetite, and the performance results so far look to be impressive. Hopefully they can match the 10%-ish gains over the RTX 2070 in a large number of titles, but the real uh, winner for me was the Ryzen 3000 series. 13% IPC gains is a little higher than what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be more around the 10%, as I had said several times in multiple videos. So I'm very happy that AMD nailed 13%. That's really impressive. 4.5 gigahertz ish isn't quite up to the 5 gigahertz that many had hoped for, but still, given the uh, number of processor cores here, and the pricing, it's still mighty impressive. Anyway, what do you think of AMD's Computex 2019 uh, event? Did they hit the expectations that you had? But for now, I'm going to get going. Hopefully, you'll subscribe to the channel. You can, of course, also uh, find us on social medias in the description of this very video. And there will be a lot more coverage on AMD hardware as uh, we get closer to the launch. Uh, clearly, with Nave, we don't have enough information to go super in-depth yet, so we're going to have to wait for E3, unfortunately, for their live stream. But I'm going to let you all go. So take care of yourselves, and bye for now.